It's a do-it-yourself thing on a Monday morning. Pupils of Cape Three Point Primary School pushed to the edge. Stories of children learning under trees with no chairs to sit on and teachers to teach is common in Ghana, but that of Cape Three Point is rather interesting. It's 10 o'clock on a Monday morning and teachers are here to arrive for these children. It's only because most of these teachers live far outside this community and would have to commute for about 25 kilometers to get here every Monday morning. Um, it's a dark room with very little ventilation. But what this camera wouldn't tell you though, is just the amount of heat these children would learn in every single day. Yeah, it's difficult because we are facing a lot of challenges in this community. The students, some of them don't like coming to school. And even their parents, too, when they complain the thing, they say that they are not having money to pay even the extra classes, uh, 30 pesos. And even for the person to get uh, money to come to school is difficult. So at times, we, the masters, have to go around and give maybe some of the uh, kids money before coming to school. Hmm. Even it's horrible because in this place, is it, they are not having anybody that they are going to, they are going to say that um, this, this man is my role model or this lady is my role model. No, they are not having. So always they thought that their fathers always let, let me explain this one tree. I'm going to say I'm quite poor. Uh, fishing, going fish. So the money, the, the money, the small money that they get, they used to cater the family. So the juniors, the, the kids do things that they too, when they grow up, they will go and fishing. Their future, I cannot determine their future because I'm not God. Town, the epicenter of Ghana's oil wealth, like many such coastal towns, is still desperately poor five years into commercial oil production. And children pay such a high price for education. The K3 Point School has constantly recorded massive failures in the basic education certificate examination, according to figures from the Ghana Education Service. And the result of that is not hard to find. In the heart of the town, I meet 21-year-old Esther Yeboah. After scraping through the education system here to make it to the senior high school, she hits a wall. Esther, like many her age in this town, is trapped. No qualification to move on, and yet no skill to start a life. Now she has a baby. August of 2015, Ghana had raked in over three billion dollars in oil money over the last five years. But stories like that of young people in Cape Three Point, at the heart of the petrodollars, raises questions over where young people stand in all of this. Justice Beidou, Joy News, Cape Three Point. Faces of frustration queuing up to complain. This is the rent control office in Takradi, Ghana's western region. Among those here are people who are faced with rent that have more than doubled in the last one year alone. Most of them have been given two options, pay up or move out. The Takradi's oil bust comes sooner than expected. Because just three years ago, housing was a big issue in this city. New people moving in because of the oil fine at the time would pay any price for an accommodation. 
But just three years down the line, and with the industry itself having shrunk over these last few years, many people have moved out. But the prices of houses in this city has failed to drop. And the people left here who are the indigents, they are the ones that are bearing the brunt for increased rent. The oil fines actually plays a major role. You know, there have been speculations that are now that uh, we have been exploiting oil in commercial you know, proportions. Uh, there will be influx of people to this region, and that is rightly so. And that also means that uh, housing, which is already in a very serious deficit, will be created. You know, I mean, another, a, a huge deficit will still be created. And uh, most landlords and landladies, for that matter, are taking advantage of this. Takradi, the epicenter of Ghana's oil find, has always been a hype city and an expensive town to live in. But when oil came, everything changed. And according to many residents here, this change was for the worse. You don't, you are not having any direct benefit of stuff like that. Yes. Businessman Kwame Edumante was one of many who invested in real estate in this city, hoping to cash in on the demand. Now the rooms have been doubled and quadrupled, all in anticipation of this oil business. There was no Stella Lodge as of that time. Stella Lodge came. There was Stella apartment. Hillcrest went into apartment, Rebo went into apartments, there was Pinnacle Lodge, that was purely apartments for the oil people, a lot of houses and airport rage that were given out to the oil people and stuff like that. So there were a lot of high-end apartments that came in. The real estate industry saw a boom because people were paying between $2,000 to $3,000 a month for these houses. Global oil prices have taken a tumble since 2014, and the picture still looks bleak for the industry going into 2016. So how is Takradi, Ghana's oil city, going to cope? As a developer, I have a couple in Takradi, I have a couple in Accra. Um, I was of the view that the Takradi one would have moved faster, but it's not. So as it stands right now, it's just sitting there because you do all the fitting there, conditioning, plumbing works and everything. So if the person comes now, then I, I do the final fixtures because I don't want to do the final fixtures and not get rent and then it will accumulate. So they are here, this one, the other one, and a couple of two are the back here to be developed. But right now I'm putting it on, on hold. It's almost a year now um, since um, we, <laughs> we put it up. Nobody really knows what the future holds for this city, but people keep nursing hopes that they can catch up with the oil riches promised before production started five years ago. Justice Beidou, Joy News, Takaradi.